Okay, uh, we're here with it uh, at uh, Eindhoven, at uh, uh, Robocup, and unfortunately with it, uh, we couldn't give this presentation in Amsterdam, but uh, to be sure that uh, everybody knows what the uh, Amok has done for a nice uh, dark tour record uh, here. So Amok, I'll show you what you did Uh, 
and uh, we use PCA compression to reduce the dimension. Uh, so what we are basically doing is take the raw phase, uh, take a default model, and then try to fit the model over the phase to get uh, landmark point. I don't know if you can see this, but there are these green dots on the phase, and those are the landmarks which uh, stay, uh, which stick to the phase. So even if uh, this girl tilts her head or uh, uh, looks the other way, the points are going to fall over the phase so that we always and this is an important step because we want to extract RTP values only from the forehead or maybe the left cheek or the right cheek. So this helps. So once this is done, yeah, we define a region of interest. We can choose any region over there. But these regions are flatter, the intensity of the is higher. So we choose this. Yeah, robust movement. So this was the point of using the landmark because they are robust to movement. So um, yeah, this really helps in uh, uh, Okay, so now what do we observe in the region of interest? So the RGP values, of course, and uh, what we do is we do a spatial averaging and we take, uh, uh, we average the RGP components in the, in the region of interest. But what we find is that the red, as you can see in the graph also, the red channel is already fluctuating, but it's not, uh, it doesn't represent the heartbeat of the some other noise. I mean, it, it could be pathophysiographic data, which, uh, which can be related to respiration rate, etc. But we are right now we are only interested in the heart rate. So what we find is that yeah, the red is too noisy, blue is too stable, but the green is somehow just right, and uh, it contains the strong pathophysiographic signal. And this can be attributed uh, to the fact that yeah, the absorption level of blood oxyhemoglobin, which uh, captures the uh, green light and uh, thus more, when more green is captured the skin is more red. So yeah, and once we have this we do a simple uh, DFP algorithm on it. Uh, so the difference between our approach and the traditional approach is uh, now we need to have a buffer time. So when you start to uh, uh, sensing a person, you have to wait for about say 10 seconds depending on your buffer window. And so this is a disadvantage. Uh, but however, yeah, this uh, yeah other advantage is of course overcome this. But yeah, we need a buffer window, and uh, yeah, we just uh, convert the time domain to frequency domain, and uh, then create a band pass filter which we using just uh, logic and real statements. And once we have the band pass filter, um, we can uh, uh, yeah we can filter only frequencies from point. Uh, when we take point A to three minutes, this point A to three minutes. And uh, uh, the rest of the frequency, the rest of the frequency uh, uh, also contains some important uh, It's almost yeah. Yes. So the rest of the components also contain some important seismographic data, but we are interested in only the heartbeat. And you can see I have, uh, in this graph there is a peak at one hertz. One hertz corresponds to 60 beats per minute which is a good stable heartbeat and um, yeah, this is what we would ideally like to see but as you will see in the next, uh, in, uh, later this doesn't really happen. Okay, now once we have the, uh, oh, I'm sorry, uh, yeah, once we have this frequency domain graph, we would want to convert it back to time domain. So we use an inverse DFT which is the exact same process but backwards and now that we have a filtered wave in the time domain, you can see this is the wave which we got from the wave you saw before, the green channel. Uh, and uh, yeah, and this is of course amplified. So now we want to measure the peaks uh, and the distance between the peaks. And then uh, we want to measure how much time has passed between each peak uh, to estimate the heart rate. We cannot say for sure that each peak corresponds to one beat of the heart. But yeah, each beat above a certain threshold level for sure corresponds to a heartbeat. Uh, we, have, we, uh, we tested this on, uh, different, uh, on different subjects and yeah, we found that uh, the, uh, this is, uh, once the filtering is done, yeah, every peak does correspond to a heart rate, heartbeat. So yeah, there are three methods that we use for peak detection. Uh, a dynamic threshold crossing where we use a dynamic threshold depending on the positive, the maximum and the minimum in the wave, uh, in the window size of 10 seconds and uh, every time it crosses the threshold we count it as a peak. We compute the slope 
also uh, first order slope and the second order slope to to filter out the uh, the smaller and the more flatter peaks because they don't really uh, represent a hard peak. And yeah, uh, we, right now what we use is a combination of the threshold and the first order slope, so that uh, yeah, which is a good enough estimate. But this is the area which needs more future work. So yeah, so. Uh, once we have the peaks, we want to use a formula to, uh, to output the heart rate. Yeah, we can use the average over the whole window, but it, it's stable, but it's not really real time. We can use the dominant frequency in the power spectrum without converting it back to time domain. But yeah, this is, has a very low resolution, so the heartbeats can be 60 and then it can be 90. So the resolution is really low. Uh, and uh, yeah, we can compute the time between two peaks, which I, uh, which we found was like a very good method because it was really, uh, it was a very recent data. But yeah, it had low stability. So if a noise peak occurs, then it completely uh, changes the value of the heartbeat. So yeah, this is the basic overview of what I just explained. You first model the phase, compute the ROIs. Uh, do a Fourier transform. Of course, if you are using fast Fourier transform, you have to do a zero padding. Then uh, you band pass it again, again convert it back to time domain, and uh, yeah, then you speed up. The advantages of uh, this application, yeah, robustness to movement artifacts uh, because of the phase model. It does not require cooperation of the subject, so we can use this in uh, security cameras and actually get the heart rate of every single person passing through that area. Yeah, it can have a sensing range of greater than 100 meters. It can even have a sensing range of, depending on the camera lens, it can have even 500 meters. Uh, but of course, camera lens and camera resolution. And uh, many people can be monitored using the same setup, the same camera. Uh, it can be combined with expression detection to detect uh, feelings like arousal and uh, like a light detection. Uh, this is what our company is basically developing this uh, software for. And, and uh, every uh, PPG data is actually can be used as a biometric signature because every human has a unique PPG data. But of course this requires all the noise to be removed and to get the pure PPG uh, uh, way. So, that is of course in the future, but if the, the system is perfected, it can be used that way. And yeah, over here, yeah, it's relevant to the rescue team because the rescue robots can probably want, would want to check if the person they're rescuing is dead or not. Um, yeah, the, the problem we face is that we have to wait for a long time before we can actually st start giving an output. Um, yeah, a good a solution is to use the high frame rate camera, but Again, this is not real time. I mean, uh, because the computation power of a computer is not that high, so this again creates a lag. Um, yeah, noise is still, still remains even with our peak detection and filtering. So what we want to do is smooth the data better beforehand. So we need to think about that. And the peak amplitude keeps varying, so we it's really difficult to do a threshold-based peak detection. So we should use some uh, curve fitting methods or some other AI techniques to detect this. Okay, now um, I will. I can give a live demo. The exciting part. Okay, the audience can go forward. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Plus reduction. Okay, but first let me show you. Uh, show it on a video which I already recorded, and then I can show it on the webcam also. Uh, Huh? Uh, yeah, I can do that. You can also walk forward. Uh, as I was talking about, you need a window buffer, 
uh, to for, so first you have to have the ten, first 10 seconds of a video but we, when you use a video with a high frame rate on a computer with a limited processing power this can take very long however on a 7 core processor the latest on the market it can actually give a frame rate close to 7 frames per second which is fairly real time but uh, let me show this on a webcam Yeah, maybe. Yeah, you're the victim. Okay, that's uh, good, I think. Ah, uh, Mook. Mook, there's nothing on the screen. Yeah, I can't. Uh, it, it can't be displayed over there. Uh, yeah, but as you see, uh, can you come forward? Yeah. So, as you can see, uh, the professor's face is modeled and uh, the region of interest are defined. Uh, please ignore this number, it's from the previous data. Yeah, so this, these are the G channel values from uh, your face, uh, with a raw G channel values. This is, uh, you can't really see the graph here, but th this is actually the frequency domain. And uh, this is converted back to time domain. This is from your forehead, left cheek and right cheek, and this is the average. And, uh, and yeah, uh, it's already generated some data. But as you can see, it's not exactly very stable. But uh, you can see from the graph that it definitely corresponds to heartbeats because over time it uh, repeats the same pattern over and over again. Why is the average left on the upper left uh, uh, much slower than the frequency that I see on the right? Yeah, because uh, the thing is they are not average here, but they are average uh, in their frequency domain. Okay. So they cancel each other out and then in the end, um, yeah, you, but this way we can take out the more smaller frequencies from the picture. But yeah, it doesn't always give the best possible results. Okay. Yeah, so, yeah, I think that's it. Okay. Thank you.